Greetings, I'm Joe French, and I'm coming to you from my classroom in Mount Pleasant, Utah. And this is topic 2.5, Applying the Power Rule. Well, that's a nice title, but we don't know what the power rule is yet, so let's take a look at what they mean by the power rule. So a power function is a function where we have x in the denominator, and we raise it to an exponent. Any expression x to the n, where n is a number, is a power function. So to look at the derivatives of power functions, we're going to be using the difference quotient limit to see if we can determine any patterns in our different power function derivatives. So to do that, we're going to need to be using this f of x plus h um, for various types of power functions. So we need to see what the expansion of all these x plus h to a power expansions look like. So x plus h squared is going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Hopefully we know that one from algebra 2. x plus h cubed is a little trickier, but it turns out that these expansions, squared, cubed, to the fourth, the exponents on these expansions match Pascal's triangle. Notice how in our first expansion, my coefficients were 1, 2, and 1, which matches row 2 of Pascal's triangle. For row 3, those coefficients, 1, 3, 3, and 1, will match the expansion of x plus h cubed, where our variables x and h either go down by one power or increase by one power. So my first term will be x cubed with a coefficient of 1. My next term, the power of x will go down by 1, so x squared, and the power of h, which was h to the 0 in the first term, will go up by 1. And my coefficient from Pascal's triangle will be 3. And continuing that pattern, I'll have a 3 again. The x will go down to the first power. h becomes a square. And finally, my last coefficient is 1, and I have an h cubed. Following that pattern here, for the x plus h to the fourth, I would have x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h to the first plus 6x squared h squared plus 4 x h cubed, that's a cube, plus h to the fourth. Okay, so using the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. These terms, or these expressions, will help us determine the derivatives of x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth, using our definition of derivative, our limit of our difference quotient. So, we end up, for derivative of x squared, we would have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which we just determined was x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, minus f of x. And f of x is just x squared all over h. When we simplify, we get the, our limit. Don't forget to use the limit notation in every step of the process. Our x squareds will cancel out, x squared minus x squared, leaving me 2xh plus h squared over h, which then allows us to cancel out an h from every term, divide out an h, which gives me the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h, which when h goes to 0, simply leaves me with 2x. 
If we repeat the process for x cubed, we start with our limit notation. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is what we determined on the previous slide, minus f of x, so minus x cubed, all over h. And if we do the same simplification and canceling, we have, as h goes to 0, in this case, 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. Then as h goes to 0, we will see that these two terms disappear, and we're left with 3x squared. Why don't you try x to the fourth on your own, and then we will come back and check our answers here. OK, I'm assuming you tried it on your own and found that the derivative of x to the fourth was 4x cubed. So let's look at what we found out. First of all, if I look at the derivative of x, well, that's just a line with a slope of 1. So we know that that derivative is 1. And then we found out, as we looked at the derivative of x squared, that the derivative was 2x. And the derivative of x cubed was 3x squared. And then we took a look at the derivative of 4x, and we found 4x cubed. So we have derivative of x being 1, x squared, 2x, x to the third, 3x squared, and x to the fourth, 4x cubed. I hope you're seeing a pattern here. If you see a pattern, maybe you can tell me what the derivative with respect to x of x to the n would be. What is this pattern that we're seeing? Okay, hopefully you've taken some time to try to determine the pattern, wrote it down, and now we can check. Here it is. The derivative of x to the n with respect to x is n times x to the n minus 1. So we take our exponent n we bring it down in front of our x and lower our exponent by 1. So if I asked you, what's the derivative of x to the 100? If you had to do the expansion for this, what does the 100th row of Pascal's triangle look like? x to the 100th. But now we have this fantastic shortcut. We bring our exponent down. We bring the 100 down in front, use our x, and then we reduce our exponent by 1. Isn't that awesome? All right. In our next video, we'll take a look at some examples.